throughout the last few weeks, we've been holding spaces and uh, chatting it up and talking about certain things between the Pulse Chain and Spark SparkDAO, um, uh, Maker and MakerDAO, and seemingly, you know, the, trying to tie these connections together. Um, you know, we saw Richard, you know, doing uh, nine, nine Iron had uncovered certain things within uh, the Pulse Chain uh, that we saw, like such as voting, um, buying out votes to where he could literally just technically move in and vote, change, make changes within the protocol. And then by doing so, he was able to empty out vaults and all that. And it seemed like it was, he was setting himself up to, you know, collateralize die that way. Um, maybe still, but the vaults now are on Maker are technically all being used for Spark Finance. There's four different types of protocols that are in there, like SummerFi, in InstaDAP. Um, it's in my Twitter. There's four or five different ways that you can utilize the, uh, the Spark protocol inside other protocols. Um, I know Summer Finance is ran by uh, an ex Maker DAO, ex Ave uh, person named Maria. In terms of Maria something M, she got like a picture of Oprah in her Twitter. Seems like a really cool chick. She actually did a, a very great. Uh, there was a write up on her when she was working at Maker DAO about community building and how community building and how to tie it in and to uh, you know by having this allure of a technology that not everyone understands, but is open and honest enough with it to where the community trusts it, right? And that's true in a sense, in my opinion, to what a tropo is. <laughs> but I think also, I forgot what it does, because I think there's certain clues like Blast um, has the same type of tokenomics, um, but with, with an extra layer to it. But <laughs> that extra layer to it, which is called the rebasing layer, is exactly why <laughs> that it can help and keep um, it, this thing pegged um, as well, just because it can rebase. And since it rebases, uh, the, the other token, DAI, already has a rebase mechanism built into it, too. So, touching on that, um, so we know for a fact that whenever, here, this is, this is where it gets kind of complicated. So, in the blockchain, when you wrap two things together, you make one LP token, right? And then you can take that same LP token and pair it against Pulse. Right? But what you could also do is take, instead of pairing it with against Pulse, you could take Pulse, pair it with Pulse X, and then pair those two, two, the four assets into one asset, then you got four. And then you can literally do that again, pair another asset like PDI and something, put those together, and then something else and something else, put those together, and then put four on one side, four on the other side, and pair those together, and then you have eight. If you do this enough times, the blockchain on Ethereum automatically through a, this, uh, a website called Block SEC, will label it a, un, a a suspicious scam, and then it does not track any of its value, whether there's value there or not. Because when you wrap, when you start wrapping a bunch of things together, it just seemingly it's like, oh, of course, you know this, you know, you start multi, you know, it's just like market cap, you kind of multiply it, applies on itself in a way. But what we saw Richard do was that he wrapped these things up eight or nine times, and on one side of the liquidity pool. He dumped a bunch of stable coins. So, of course, the value wasn't tracked. So when the time came, <clears throat> well, we still think it's Richard. So when the time came after Pulse Chain launched, he went back, he unwrapped all these areas. And guess what? That one liquidity pool still labeled suspicious that doesn't track value. He can now trade in <laughs> and do anything he wants in. And it can't be seen technically by the blockchain. It's definitely not tracked. Right. So it's not necessarily untraceable, but it technically is because <laughs> it's just it's just they don't want to they don't track it. They don't trace it. There's no trades going on. You know, it's a way to, to, to it's, a, it's a testing ground pretty much is what they've been calling it um, is what I've kind of uncovered. But it's the perfect place. This eighth layer as was where it's all going down. Like so they unwrapped it and they wrapped it back up pretty much. They unwrapped it so he could throw something in on the other side. Don't you know? Die, whatever it might have been, and then he wrapped it all back up, and then now he's over there trading it. And uh, it's technically what he was doing. He also did this. Uh, he could put bots on one side, have them eat away at one side. It starts at fifty fifty, goes to forty sixty, hits a rebase, boom, pays the loan back. So he's you know he's technically he could technically buy out an entire side of the liquidity pool, um, and then um, do a flash loan against it, and then literally. Have the bots taking the you know he eating the price on the other end, dump dump something else, you know less stable coins back into it, 
do a rebase, keep the profits. Um, hey, Ray, can you just explain what a rebase is? So yeah. Fun. Okay, well, rebasing is pretty much you can change the. It's instead of a volatile uh, money, instead of your asset being volatile, you sacrifice either more supply or less supply to make your chart go up and down. So if it's a positive rebase, more things, more tokens go into uh, supply and your chart goes down. You rebase negative, negatively, your sacrifice, everyone sacrifices their tokens for the price chart to go up. So it's pretty much a, it, it, like your, your shares stay the same. So like your supply times whatever divided by, like there's an algorithm, there's a, it's a simple equation, but that your, your actual share of the total supply never changes. Just the numbers on the screen change to either everyone gets more tokens or less tokens. And uh, there are different mechanisms within the rebase that you can set up to where like you can either like neglect some wallets or add some wallets. That's where it gets a little bit more complicated. But theoretically, a rebase token is just that. Either add, adding to the supply, it sacrifices the uh, volatility of the, the fucking chart itself for the, for the for volatile supply to either maintain price, to like keep it at a dollar per se, or to let the chart go up forever, or to reward people and then just go, it keeps going down, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, weird, it's a weird proposition, but it's a way technically that we could rebase die. Like we can get the 10 cents and if they want to kill the supply, they could literally just rebase it from 10 cents to a dollar like that. And then all of a sudden we have 2.2 billion um, die in supply. And then, of course, we would go from, you know, your 20 million to 2 million die, per se. Don't think that's their plan. I think they minted it. And I think that they brought that many into existence because they have every every reason to. Because um, within the block SEC and that, um, they, uh, or, I'm sorry, Spark Finance, there's this thing called uh, Block Atlantica. It's an AI technology that is constantly scanning and running the blockchain to see if it is viable to technically mint more die. So it'll, it'll, let the, it'll let them know either if they can launch front, front ends of Spark on their protocols. Like there was a, uh, one of the things that they, assessments that they did was on Gnosis Chain. Before they launched on Gnosis Chain, they ran a full assessment. And the assessment talks about the, ba the balancer hack. During the balancer hack, it talks about how much money they lost. And the, you know, but it also showed that they had a substantial recovery. And that after that, you know, after the recovery that showed the trajectory of the chain was super positive. So they went ahead and told them, gave them the okay to go ahead and launch on that chain. So it's an it's a it's an AI technology governed by humans, written in code that can't be tampered with by humans and or overruled by the AI itself. Right. So it's this, it's a smart contract. You know, you got same 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 thing as smart contracts. It's a it's a it's an agreement between money that can't be tampered with after it's after the code is there, and then you know we can interact with it, you know, within our own means. And that's why we love blockchain, right? So that's pretty much what this is. This is a way to kind of, kind of put a, you know, speed limiter per se on the AI because you don't want it running rampant and just, you know, telling you to do certain things or whatever. You still want that human involvement, that human touch. So this is a, is a and this technology has pretty much told them <laughs> that they can mint X amount of that. And that the block, and I would think that the human consensus model within the, within blockchain would say, yeah, we deserve more liquidity. Why don't we have so much? Why don't we have liquidity? Well, because the dollar sucks, right? It's like um, then they're holding us back on purpose. We're gate kept on purpose. Um, this allows this allows us to do two things. Um, it allows blockchain to now front run the dollar and keep it and keep it from hurting our chain even more. Because what's I mean, the reason we're in predicaments that we've been in over the past couple of years is just because of that. So like once we're able to uh, work our way through that. So, once we're able to kind of work our way through that, we'll be able to uh, pretty much solve a lot of problems. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's insane because if we can front run fiat and we're able to unlock the value that was once locked, say, uh, burnt tokens, right? It would like things like that. This, this is what they're pretty much getting the okay to do, to let go in there and mint more die, which is still voted on by consensus. And they've been minted into 200 million the day before yesterday, 300 million yesterday, and I'm not sure where, where we're at today. But there, you can go to like maker slash burn com, and all this stuff's happening on chain. So the DAI is minting, and they're also, you know, they've also been allocated um, more USDT, more USDC, and uh, US, uh, USDE, which is another one that they've been allocated for. They've reached the debt ceiling of the 2.5 billion 
they'll vote on that again to raise it. Uh, Morpho, which is a company that allows you to make extra dye with your staked um, Rathith, they've raised, I mean, they've reached 1 billion already. So they were capped at that uh, whenever I last looked, but I'm sure that they will also be voted on to allow them to uh, to do it. And this again, this is, this is all started pretty much with S Dye and Spark Labs launching a week, maybe days before Pulse Chain. Uh, we do know Hexanaut you know, seems to be a, uh, a guy that likes Hex. Um, we know that MakerDAO took a snapshot with loads of Hex in their vault at the time, one of their vaults, like really put about $8, $8 billion in the, in the vault, took a snapshot of it because we know for a fact that they're forking. Because um, what they want to, after they've seen what we did and what's going to happen here, it just makes sense to start forking whole system states before a certain date because they will then have the ability to run that same pro protocol. Um, and then if everything is safe and everything's good, and then we actually deserve to have more liquidity, the block Atlantic would be like, yeah, and we do. Like, honestly, like, think about it. Like, who here thinks that we're only, we should only be valued, the entire crypto market should only be valued at the, the price of one company within the, within, the, within the stock market, right? It's like, we're so tiny, like 22 billion is nothing in comparison to the, we're, you're talking 30 something trillion dollars and in, in, in just debt, probably more than that alone, like 22 billion is a drop in the hat. So, and then being able to put it behind IPFS or IFPS, whatever it is, I mean, make it unstoppable and already have infrastructure in place to technically onboard the world, like real world businesses, real world utility. I mean, people that don't even know that they're getting in blockchain, that have been building and to land on blockchain, it's seemingly you would think impossible, but it makes it makes sense to why maybe this why this took so long, and uh, just the uh, the ability and the, the insight and the level of forward thinking to you know have like to know to wrap to the eighth layer, right? If you wrap to the eighth layer on Pulse, it disappears. What does that create for Pulse? It creates a private chain for Pulse. So whenever these companies want to launch. They can literally launch on their on the private layer of Pulse on the eighth and ninth layer. They'll have their own little explorer within their own little company, and then when they want to go public, you know, they can literally move it to the to the bottom layer to the layers that the layers that we can see. So it's it's literally created a there's a there's another uh, protocol called a Parallel Chain that has this dual this dual aspect to it. Never knew how it would work, right? And I could never put my finger on. It. I was like, because why is it? Why are they saying that it's listed this way? Why are they saying that it's not they're not tracking value? It's because it's literally wrapped eight. Anytime any number over eight becomes untrackable, sometimes labeled a scam because maybe they were a scam. And why would he copy something like that? If it was labeled a scam, why would he solely, why would he go out and copy that and literally onboard a dude with billions of dollars that would be, that could hurt the chain? Richard wouldn't do that. He specifically copied these because he knew exactly what he was doing. By wrapping it, unwrapping it, he had the value in there, added value to the other side, and then he could trade on it and he could trade on it in a way that could not be tracked. And why is that? Why is that important? Because that's exactly what we deserve. We deserve to be able to use our technology to literally embrace that. The fact that maybe they have a way of trading on our chain and not letting everyone know what they're doing. They have that they have every right. They have every right to do that. It's not about hiding value or hiding money. It's about the freedom to do so. Right. So whenever people are like, well, they shouldn't be high. And we don't even know if it's Richard for it yet. You know, we, we do, uh, we do know some things, but we don't know it's him. Right. They have, uh, in my opinion, there's every right for them to, uh, to, to, you know, kind of use this technology kind of there, but it's right there for anyone to use. So anyone can build their own front end. Anyone can literally use their own S guy. Um, and now anyone can technically go trade on the eighth layer. Right. Um, but I believe that's on Pulse Chain is different, right? Pulse Chain, it just, we just don't see the eighth layer, so to speak. It just seemingly disappears off chain. But on the, on, on definitely on Ethereum and on Binance, it's there. It's just not trackable or traceable. Then he unwraps it, puts value to the other side of it, and then he can trade it in the same way, untrackable, untraceable, right? So, and we, and at the end of the day, the, the die that is minted is usually minted right there in front of you. It gets minted on their website, right? Um, so it's going to show. Right, and it's speeding up, it's ramping up from 200 million a couple days ago, 300 million yesterday, right? And we know that they said they wanted to mint about 100 billion. I was like, how, how, I mean, are we, I mean, even though we're valued at 2 trillion, we don't have 2 trillion in liquidity here, right? Imagine if, what if market, what if they could mint market, what if market cap equals liquidity? You know, I don't think they're going to mint that much. It would just, it'd be insane. But that's the level 
of the, the ability that we have now to just outrun the fiat dollar and to uh, front run it in a way to where it cannot harm and not have to be backed by it. I believe that they found another way to onboard real world assets without having to fucking take this stupid paper dollar. And if they did, they probably could do it now. But they can do it in a way that they could burn, they could track it, right? They could either they could start burning it, you know, they could miss a bunch of USDT or something and then start burning it, you know, <laughs> start collecting USDT with their die, right? And then start burning it out of circulation to get rid of it. There was that's one token that he like he messed with, but he seemingly kind of pushed that to the side, like out out of pools and <laughs> kind of just grabbed it and used it for trading. Because um, this is a bunch of fractionalized shit, right? Because they would every time you add a dollar and then you mint two tokens, you put two tokens of debt or two dollars of debt on the blockchain. It wasn't until later on whenever people realized that, oh, multi-collateral die and backing it with on-chain value made much, much more sense. And guys in a bind, you know, and then massive binds, honestly, by, by being backed by this dollar. But will we, I mean, the dollar seems like a standard that, do we pack it a dollar? I have no idea. It, we might have a dollar, I mean, well, a loaf of bread or something. Might be something else in mind. Might be something bigger than, entirely. But we do know that there is die minting. We do know that they they're using the those those, those other layers. It's not, it's not because anything's a scam or anyone's hiding anything. It's just because we have every right to use our technology to our advantage, so that other people don't have to watch what we're doing, right? And that's what they're doing. Do we know who it is? Seemingly, we can guess. And at the end of the day, it the, yeah, the guy launched right before Pulse Chain. Um, I mean, just everything lines up to the fact that that Block Atlantica would have taken a scan. Notice that value's missing over here and been like, okay, this much needs to mint. And it will technically let you mint until that point. And that's anybody. Anybody can get over there and start minting that. It's not just them, right? They are the ones capping it out. So it's kind of hard to get in there. But, you know, freely they're raising their debt ceilings and other people can get in. But most people either aren't catching on. They think that I'm full of shit or anyone that's saying this is full of shit. But it's like the die is minting. Like, and regardless if, if he's there or not, the bots alone will recognize that there is a huge gap in value with, the, with an asset that is literally the same contract address, the literally paired to the same contract address, and the boss will do the rest of the work. Might take time, right? But I can tell you right now that there's way more in store and way more things going on behind the scenes than what my little peanut brain could even comprehend. And uh, that's what I mean, it's exciting. I mean, I, soon, as soon as I it clicked today, I was like, I have to go share this with people. So the word can spread, and then people can get in and, you know, attempt to, attempt to try to get people to at least listen to some of these AMAs and just be like, you know, nothing's dead. You know, things are dang, things are falling, but that's just because it's an opportunity. They want to shake people out. Everyone's getting shook out left and right. The government is running around with their heads on their hands going, what the F is going on? Because they don't know what's going on. <laughs> they, they, have, they have no way to stop it at this point. It's inevitable, right? So it's like anyone that's mad or upset at, at this, at the aspect of this possibly being true, is not an advocate of crypto. Like, if they're going, oh, well, if he's not involved in this, like, that, that just does, means nothing. It means nothing. What matters is that we're able to net liquidity that, the, that we deserve, right, to, to be able to move money around. I mean, we're stuck in a rock between a hard place when we were backed by the dollar, and we're only onboard by the dollar. Now, if we have a way to literally onboard real-world assets, and liquefy them, like instead of having it like, and that's the thing with this new token that, they're, that they've been using, where you can take in, it's for, it's for stocks and for bonds. So if someone gives you a one stock worth $200, it's not that you just give them one token, or like they give you 20 of this and you have to give them 20 of that. It's like, no, you can take one of something and give them 300,000 of something, or it can be provided as 300,000 and another type of token. So like being able to understand that and that capabilities my friends, is huge. Like, it's just like the companies alone being able to do so and like being able to onboard them and stuff is going to be pretty awesome. Can you explain uh, how that capabilities of like, let's just say a random stock or something coming onto the blockchain, how does that actually happen? And, like, can you explain to that to the audience? <sighs> Ooh, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, that. I mean, maybe you might be better at explaining it. But I mean, from what I could tell, like like a stock coming on to the like, say ERC four hundred four, right? So you could use an ERC four hundred four that this kind of has that mint and burn capabilities, to where that could be issued to 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 holders, 
and because it has a rebasing function as well in it. So it pretty much can be issued out to holders over and over again. You can cap the supply as well. Um, I mean, that's that's one way to kind of just mimic, but it's going to be the same kind of thing that he did here, right? Just mimicking the, uh, like uh, being able to copy things again. Like, so if it was like a whole section of a stock market, right? He probably, probably do about the same thing. They would have to go over there, copy the value, bring it onto the blockchain, and just kind of rinse and repeat what we've seen with the uh, with pulse. If they're doing more than one, right? Um, if it's just one, the process would be seemingly using AI to run a scan on the company. Then the Block Atlantica, right? I believe the pulse has its own. <laughs> it's a whole nother rabbit hole. But uh, they could technically run a scan, and then the indicators. And there's uh, this thing already exists, right? It's a uh, it's literally called like Chef something, but Block Atlantic it uses and it, it runs a risk tolerance on this stuff, and it tells it, okay, they made this much money. There might have been a threat here. They might have lost this much money here, but it looks like they're on an upward trajectory. All right, let's go ahead and issue them four hundred thousand shares at eighty cents on the public test net or the public public launch, or depending on depending on what level they think that they're at, or if they don't want to go public, let's issue you know this many shares at this price and then boom, it's like no one's involved. It's 100% automatic. And it would be literally like the company would go into something like LinkedIn, right? And list their company, list their website, list what they're about. And then traders and everyone else can kind of scroll through it, hit likes and, you know, like a social platform, right? And the, that comes into effect because Block Atlantica would technically realize that people, oh, they really like this company. And it would take a, an AI that has, you know, pretty much like Chad GP, GTP where it has been learning and, been taught these skills of being able to catch certain things, age levels of people, um, just just different aspects like that that come into a that definitely come into play when it comes to AI. And I think that that was one of the main reasons why we waited for Pulse to launch. Like we needed stability AI and stability diffusion. They didn't even fork the thing until the, probably the day before the launch. Like seriously, guys, like <laughs> the thing might have not even been. And if he did, they definitely forked it so many times. They probably like, they probably have fucking seven hundred forks. Um, and they probably had, they probably forked Bitcoin too. And I, but I have my own theory behind that, but I won't go on, go on too much detail too about that. But of course they're going to fork it more than once. And like, he's probably forking it right in front of us. Like, it's like, yeah, there was some stuff that was already copied, but like some other things was always, seemed like it was always updating. It's like always, it's always updating. I think that they can literally still technically point the server at it and start copying it again. Like if something launched over there and they wanted it over here, they probably just Point the point the oracle and do it all over. It's like literally copy it out of like a live feed, because the way stability diffusion and stability AI work kind of similar. The same guy invented it, but it, it copies the framework, the underlying the underlying framework of how it's built, and then it kind of works its way up. So by whenever he wrapped those folders, it's kind of like a zip folder. So he wrapped them up and it, like making wraps as upon wraps upon wraps. I just think of like folders going into it, putting another folder inside of it, and another folder inside of that, and having to click on it. And you're like Jesus. If you go on Pulse Chain, it's a lot different than any other chain, right? The when you look at a liquidity pool, it's got 150 assets sitting there, right? Every other chain, there's not many chains that have more than two or three tokens listed inside a, a liquidity pool, um, and there's a reason for that, right? Like being able to tie liquidity together is the whole thing of why we believe Pulse is the way that it is, and it literally launches that way. It's literally built. Yeah, it's literally, and the communities are so in tune to understanding that. Hey, man, if we tie that, like. What other community can, whether I don't remember any of this happening in BSC, where you're walking around and people are handing each other 1%, 2% of each other's supply and then just burning it, just forever burning it, and then being able to think that's that's old, that's going to be tradable money for life, you know? Um, that's There's a certain level of vibe, a certain level of instinct, and a certain level of educated people here to where they can at least have their minds open opened up enough to where, yes, things might be down. But, you know, we got, we, we got, we got our age, man. It just upsets me whenever people are saying, oh, he buys the top. And then it's like, no, it was a leverage play. Like, yeah, of course, I made a viral clip by saying he shorted it. Of course, it wasn't a short, but he didn't, he didn't buy the top. He, 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 got, he got a hell of a lot more SDI. It was pretty much a leverage play, but he got more SDI out of it. And at, at the end of the day, you want, you want more SDI, especially for what he was doing, because he could, at that point, he could make die for free. So he was giving up the ETH and stuff like that. It didn't matter because he could then buy ETH at a higher price whenever ETH drops, because if he would have bought ETH or spent his ETH, you know, at a higher price or bought it at a higher price, he would have been had more money to then mint. Yeah, so it's just like it's pretty much a leverage play. Either way, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But yeah, so it's just it got to the point where I was like, okay, this everyone seems kind of down. What what can I do to, you know, share them, 
my theory because everyone else was kind of looking down other rabbit holes and going down other things, which was great. Like Nine Nine had his own theory, but I wanted to make sure that whenever I brought it to the table, that my theory was not sound, but made sense to me. And if something makes sense to me and I'm sharing it with my community, I just felt like it was time for me to uh, to kind of come out of my my shell, so to speak. Right? I spent all my time on the BSC. I launched tokens over there because my entire goal was to onboard the BSC. Because I, there was no point in onboarding hexagons and pulsicons into launches if uh, if they're already going to the chain, right? I was just like, this thing to me. So this, I stayed over there, stayed quiet, and just built my own little community. And then when it was time, you know, that's whenever I, was, I started looking into this. I found Sunny and uh, A1A and all that. Then uh, everything kind of started to slow down a little bit. And that's whenever I just started, like, really picking up my pace and really digging into this and, like, really digging into theory the theory itself and then uh it's only grown and now it's just it's gotten to the point where it's just like it's it's pretty massive and regardless if <laughs> anyone's a part of it or not the die is going to mint right it's going to stop whenever whenever the uh, block atlantica decides we know that they want to mint 100 billion it seemingly thinks that the i mean i would assume if Rune said that that the block atlantica probably gave them the you know gave them the okay to mint that you know and if we're going to mint it and someone has the ability to mint that much, why wouldn't it be us? Again, we don't want to be front-run by other people or front-run by, you, you know, USDT. Definitely don't want them finding out. They can just mint it out of thin air. And that's scary. At least we're over there mining it and doing it through voting and through, through consensus. Like, we're actually, you don't, don't, you don't want to dump that much value onto the chain that quickly. Like, if you're going to onboard gold onto a chain, you're not going to dump all the value in one day onto it. No, you're going to figure out a way how to siphon it in. But technically, you still be on chain. But, it, but in a safe space, like, so you're still in the blockchain, but you're, like, in this layer that can be read, you know, but it, it, it's not tracked, right? So that's the, uh, in my opinion, that's, like, it's the perfect place for that to go. Um, as well as, like, just being able to technically, like I said, have a, have a technically a, a private blockchain sitting above, or on, uh, technically above a, a public blockchain, and literally just being able to flop between the two. Imagine being able to hold your driver's license and your medical records and stuff like that on the eighth layer, or ninth layer, tenth layer, but only until you transact off that layer, right? Does that transaction become a public transaction? Otherwise, you're just y'all guys are just trading in between each other up at the top. Things are still tracked and traced, but it's just not visible to the this, this, the public blockchain, right? So I don't know if anyone's ever used Monero or anything, but I would think be very similar to that, except we have an entire public blockchain and a public layer that's literally tied to every asset, every copy of the exact same contract address that's been utilized for years. Um, yeah. So I was just, the Block Atlantica, I, I want you to go definitely check out the Block SEC website. The, that's got a Falcon Explorer. And it's like, it's got, like literally you click on it and you can drop a transaction and it gives you a bubble map. The bubble map will pop up. You can click on something on the, on the bubble map and it'll literally take you to the transaction. And then if you open if you open it up right, it'll, you can literally use it on Etherscan. It's like if you open up Etherscan, it'll literally have certain buttons on Etherscan that you can click there, and it'll literally utilize that for you to do that. So it's a pretty awesome technology. And it was seemingly launched days after I found it. I, in my opinion, I believe this AI technology knows whenever it's being used and being found, and it, and it, it reacts and acts literally based off of human, human interaction. So the more that we engage, the more it shows. And I literally think that's how it goes. Because that's why I feel like every time I find something, it's like the next day something else happens. Because I think that it's not like it's someone's chasing me around. But, you know, it just feels like this, like the more it's like a cause and effect type thing. And just like, like literally like being able to manifest your own reality. I mean, sci vibe type shit. You know what I mean? Like that's some stuff that he talks about and that he touches on. He's like, you know, I just believe that's what has been going on, why it took so long. And, you know, if everyone and everyone's so worried about that, it's like Hex itself, if, like, if this is like, if just say 20% of my theory comes to fruition, Hex is going to be the highest performing asset no matter what still. Like, it's just like, it has nothing to do about your bags. Like, this is about us being able to finally have a place to, uh, to, to transact with everything, to bring real companies and real, real world utility and real world assets right onto the chain. And seemingly, yeah, it's like literally revolutionized the entire uh, entirety of crypto. And yeah, the main, me and my community did have a few conversations about sharing this information, um, right? So it's like we thought about it, and ultimately, it's like 
if, he, if they can't speak, they're keeping their mouth shut, someone has to speak about it. And that's why I believe that they, uh, that's why this stuff is unlocking the way that it unlocks. It's like, he's not waiting on anything. He's not waiting on anybody or any time for him. He's waiting on us to catch up. He's waiting on us to release. He's waiting for us to talk about these things because he knows that it's set up in a way that it literally unfolds as it's supposed to. Just like human consensus or human interaction would whenever you stumbled upon a gold mine, right? Like you, you find it and you go out and hire people and then you bring more people there. And then all of a sudden there's a town there. And it's just like it's, it's a way to have actual human interaction fill, fill the gap to real world utility in the blockchain. Just why a tropa got built, right? The way that money moves through a tropa is literally what would happen in a real world society as if money was traveling through it. Some do good with their money, some do bad with their money. And, you know, that's just, they have, and you can't teach a bot to be shitty, but you can teach a bot to trade a certain, a certain action. And then every now and then it'll send it to, send it to a certain place where the money doesn't necessarily get lost, but it just kind of sits, sits down there and spins around in circles, but it creates, it, but by doing that, it's creating these layers. And you, the more that there's, the more projects that kind of just have a lot of liquidity and are given up on, the higher these layers become, and the easier it is for us to uh, technically, over time, once it's built up a lot, we'll be able to do the same thing again. We'll run, we'll be able to run our AI. But oh shit! Look at all that block. Look at all that. Look at all that locked money. Oh, let's mint. Boom! All that value that was once locked and burnt is reminted and redistributed. All the ruggers, all the assholes, all that stuff could be literally remitted and given back to the people that uh, deserve it the most, the ones that are still around, still here, still building. And that uh, it's pretty awesome. And again, it's, it's actually, we like to add, in my opinion, that's like, well, why is it the whole hiding thing I kind of just don't get? It's like the whole point of blockchain is to have this, to have an anonymous feel to it, and this a, a, autonomous you know, ability, right? Like if you had some type of technology, like you wouldn't want everyone sitting there seeing what you're doing. Like, I think he, Richard touches on it all the time about, like, you know, if you're trying to pay customers or pay a client, you don't want everyone knowing what you're paying everybody. Like, you, you've got to have that. And I believe that he's, he's got a solution for that. And I think that everyone and their mom is going to come flooding the pulse chain and for just for just for these reasons alone, much less everything else that I, that I think could be technically happening and already in the works, um, like having our own Block Atlantica, um, having, our own, having our own trading software like... Uh, Poly Phoenix, to where we can literally just sit back. Our money moves around for us. Everything's done autonomously. Um, we could go around and tell it what kind of set parameters and things like that, or you don't have to, right? But I think it's all about the movement of money, keeping money flowing, keeping money moving, because we've gotten to a state in our economy that the rich hoard it, the poor spend it, and we run out of it, and then there's not enough of it. So um, we don't want to see that happen here. We don't want to just mint stuff out of thin air, but at least... Whenever we're doing things, if it's done by the, it's, it's the right people doing the right things for the right reasons, which hardly ever happens. And when you're doing things for the right reasons and there happens to be casualties, in this circumstance, casualties get rich. That's all I can say. That's all I can really wrap my head around it is that if they're doing what they're doing, right, it's like there's going to be people that, you know, front run that and then, you know, could get very wealthy. And the people are thinking, oh, what if they dump it? They're going to come over and just dump it. Okay, cool. They're going to dump it and take it where? To Bitcoin? What if we have an Oracle facing that? Right? What if there's, what if this, you know what I mean? Like this, like taking the money, as long as they keep the money on, in, in the blockchain, we'll be okay. So, I mean, I just, I, I, like, are they really going to, you know, dump $400 million and go take it to fiat? First off, where are they going to take it? Who's going to accept it? Why would they do that? So pretty wild to me whenever that's their argument is that they're going to dump it and run away it's like where, where to you know like, like where are you going to run to you're going to go you're really going to go take that money to fiat because i just don't think that would be the best idea and i really don't think that they would do that yep so yeah does anyone have any questions i know kind of it's going a little spill there no what's up access let's see there's something down there i know i kind of went on a little tangent but if anyone has any questions um feel free to ask and yeah definitely i'll, I'll uh I'll post some uh, some information on the uh, on my Twitter, like some of the websites and things like that, um, to see. You know, let y'all kind of do the research ourselves. Again, this is you know pure speculation. I'm just a dude that works on the world league, so you know, <laughs> I just I just want to be able to bring information to you guys so y'all can uh, go out of y'all's way to do a little bit of the research and uh, see what's going on. Like uh, Maker Burn, you can go see exactly what's going on over there. 
Um, anyone can build their front end. Anyone can make their front end over there. Um, you know, anyone can use SDI. Uh, and then, yeah, just think that we have some super, super, super stuff and super exciting stuff coming on. And uh, I have every reason to believe that uh, we're right in the mix and right where we need to be on Pulse Chain. It's the, it's, it sometimes doesn't, maybe it doesn't feel like it. I get that. But uh, at the end of the day, that's usually how things uh, unfold. Um, the, there's always the, the calm and the, the, I mean, the last three years were just absolutely treacherous. And it was kind of like we were, you know, sometimes blaming ourselves. You know, at the end of the day, it was it's our own fault. But I, I promise you that, that uh, the, the, the return for waiting could be tremendous, um, not only for you, but I'm sure maybe for some of our families too, right? Being able to either reach out to them or being able to help them out too, because that's what this ultimately is about. Like, you know, being able to, I see a couple of little requests. So let me, let me get y'all in here real quick. Let's see. But yeah, if anyone has any like any kind of questions like that, um, but yeah, ultimately, uh, wrapping something more than eight times can become comes it literally becomes an untrackable, traceable layer. Um, unwrapping it at that point would still keep it untraceable, untrackable, but then trading on it at that time, technically, you could do so, and it would still you wouldn't see any value, you wouldn't be able to see any of that going on. Um, which is fucking genius, honestly. And like, literally, some of these some of these liquidity pools were four years old, like three, four years. So I mean, this is like before hex type shit. Like he, he was doing this. And as far as him controlling maker, like it's I don't know, the one that he the protocol. And at the end of the day, he could run. He's it's an open ended protocol. He can run front ends all day. He can fork the, the Spark token, which is all he needs to do. He doesn't need to be under control of Maker to do any of this at all. So I think that's a mute point um, because he doesn't need to be under control of Maker to make any of this happen, period. Um, he just needs to be able to know the technology and how to use it, which he does, and he did. We saw him We saw him uh, do the same thing with DMM, MDI, and MEDI on Ethereum, like these tokens that were just randomly sitting there with this random website. <laughs> he walks over there and... You know, he takes them and he changes them, like takes their contracts, forks them, takes the value. It's like $7 million and just kind of swings it on the pulse chain. And then all of a sudden he knows how to use these assets. And uh, and then the, the new token itself is a combination of both those tokens. So it, literally that technology came directly from MakerDAO itself. They just happened to change the names and kind of slide it underneath something else. Um, ultimately, he, I believe that he controls Maker, like the, like the entirety of Maker. Um, not necessarily as the owner, but just because he has so much Bitcoin and stuff like that in there. He, so he can control the uh, the votes and the swing of the votes because he literally just owns that much of it. We don't know how much he owns. We'll never really know. Um, so he's not, he doesn't want to take on another token. But, you know, that's why Rune and them are launching their own chain. And they're doing the same thing because they're going to be able to technically create another, a third market, which we probably deserve. We're, <laughs> they were probably so undervalued that there's the, like this, like I told this before, this is going to be a, a common theme that gets done because we need the liquidity, deserve the liquidity, and it's hard to build and away on purpose and scares people like can't even get people on board because their bank tells them they can't do it. So it's just like you don't, you, yeah. So it's like. If you can move away from it, awesome, right? But being able to front run it is genius because they can't take that means if they come and take they take a bunch of US dollars and throw it out of chain, they can mint and burn right then and there, and it would just be game over.